Anan all our food, all the living things here had to be prayed to because they're alive like we are. Corbin uh, is one of our strong spiritual leaders. He's very important to, to the Indians in this area and other areas because of his strong spiritual value. He's the one that does all the praying. He works uh, uh, pray to the uh, Creator for everything that's put here on earth and pray for us, prays with us, ask us to pray, ask us to give an offering. See, our belief that uh, whenever you take something away from Mother Earth, you put something back. He's also one of our doctors who's able to heal us of different ailments. Everything's got a life to it. Those are the things that we talk to as an Indian people. The spirits out there, there's spirits out here all the way around us. Those are the things that we've been told to take care of. We've been told to take care of what you've got so you can leave something for the younger generation to say. That's what uh, the Indian people have prayed to and kept their spirit alive for thousands of years. I'm hoping to keep the spirit life alive here, to keep it in. The Banzawambar Canyon here is very important to the Shoshone people. Eunice, she's at 100 right now. She's been doing her healing people for uh, ever since she was very small. Her mother got her power from right here and passed it on to her. And she's really proud of this canyon. She always talk about this because her mother is buried here somewhere. This is our spiritual ground for thousands of years. This is where we, the people, put our spirit, our power, our prayers. If we all pray alike throughout the world, we would have a beautiful world, we'll have peace. But we don't have peace because the evil's always overtaken the, the good. Four, three, two, one. Zero time. What is it doing within our Mother Earth? When that power explodes down here, thousands of feet down, what is it doing to our water table down below? When the spring comes out on the mountain, what does it do? Some of these days, those springs are not going to be pure anymore because the water already told me that. I'm going to look like water. And nobody's going to use me. people out there that's doing all this damage, they don't have rent from us. They never had permission. And we feel that it's the wrong thing what they're doing out there. It doesn't go according to our, our belief and our religion. I'm glad all your people are here. My concern as a spiritual leader for the Shoshone Nation, we got a treaty right here. The government made those promises. This land belongs to the Western Shoshones. 
seemed to me they wanted to destroy this Mother Earth. All the living things on this Mother Earth is alive, like we are. The stones are alive. Everything's alive here. But the nuclear testing is killing the spirit within the Mother Earth. Let's put a stop to nuclear testing throughout the world. So that way we have cleaner life and cleaner air, cleaner water.
thanks so much for being with us. And it was a fine action today. Could you tell me a little bit about what you do specifically? Summit. And my purpose here today was specific to notifying the Department of Energy, the Wagon Hut Security who work for the Department of Energy, and the Nye County Sheriffs that they're in trespass. Trespass is not only committed by their presence here unlawfully in violation of the Treaty of Ruby Valley, but by the instruments under their control, such as nuclear materials, their trucks, their contaminated sites. These all constitute acts of trespass. Okay, thank you. And what is um, the long-term project project that you, you do? Well, that's a broad question. question. Long-term, it's survival. But uh, we have different activities which we're engaged in, which are intended to uh, maintain and preserve the people, to uh, maintain our identity, to maintain our sovereignty, and to uh, strengthen the peoples so that we can exist long into the future. Nuclear technology, however, has come um, has come to us and visited us and in, in disrupted our life ways uh, in a way which is completely unacceptable. Our interests and the interests of the United States have come head to head. And ours must prevail because ours are for the Shoshone. Ours are intended to preserve the people and the United States is in my opinion, intended to destroy a lot of people. And we can see some of that going on today. Mm -hmm. Could you tell, tell us a little bit about Shoshone, Shoshone and your, your, your sovereign nation? Well, we pre-exist the United States. We're like this desert tortoise out here in the desert. The United States tends to look at us and think that it can uh, remove us can uh, destroy our habitat and there will be no consequences. We pre-exist the United States. We're part of this land. The United States is created around us. One of the problems we've had in the past is that our, our knowledge, our, our lifestyles, our life ways has been under investigation we would have anthropologists, archaeologists, uh, sociologists, uh, FBI, CIA, whoever's uh, convenient, the military. These people will come into our communities, look at, study, uh, investigate, take knowledge, take information, take data away, and assess it, study it further using their own value system. Then they will decide what types of uh, remediation, if it's environmental uh, concern, uh, what type of uh, technology, technology approach, what type of mitigation is appropriate. And they've done this entirely based on their own values. Uh, the difference is that that science is, if it's a case of science, is deficient, which is different than what we do. We, we have a program right now, Nuclear Risk Management, and we use our own value system it's kind of easy for us to do that. However, the difference is that when we go into our communities, we work science with the community, bring them together, and we move forward. This is a collaborative effort. It's innovative. It's not something that Western science is used to doing. They usually focus on a subject, study it, and then make their assessments and determinations based on that. We bring it together. Our science is better. It's stronger, and it's really helpful to the people. The people are then empowered. It takes a little bit longer, but it's better science because we've taken ourselves as part of the environment, and the science is better. It's indisputable. It may not be as technical in many areas. They can study something. They can study this rock, but if you don't understand that this rock is part of the desert, you're losing part of the picture. And so we're, we're doing this, and what this does is make our science better. And it's indisputable when compared to uh, the Western science.
And what can viewers do to actually help? If people are interested, what, what can you see that, that they can actually do to help? What people need to do is write to the President of the United States. They need to write to their members of Congress. They need to uh, write to their senators. And they need to write to the uh, representatives of foreign governments, NATO governments particularly, because NATO forces are here within Western Shoshone territory. Now, there are, they are going to uh, state that there are issues of national security, the Atomic Energy Commission, the uh, National Security Act, but what really is at stake here is, is humanity, their humanity, my humanity, all of our humanity. And the crimes here are crimes against humanity. And it's important that we uh, recognize this and do something about it. There is no justification for destroying a people. And if I could go into that just a little bit, um, we're familiar with what's going on in Kosovo. Here in this situation, the United States chose to to act to what it believes were uh, genocide crimes against humanity. The same thing, the same uh, crimes against humanity are taking place here. Instead of uh, a foreign government, we have the United States government. Genocide uh, runs hand in hand with environmental racism. Environmental racism is, for example, when a community of color, Native American, Afro-American, uh, Asian, is targeted for hazardous, toxic, high-risk uh, ventures from, from government or private corporations. And one good case is the uh, proposed enrichment facility in Homer, Homer, Louisiana. The, the community there was a uh, African-American community and they were able to stop the enrichment facility because they demonstrated that their community was being consistently targeted for hazardous, toxic uh, complexes. So that's an example of environmental racism. Here we have the same situation because we have uh, supersonic operations er areas. We have China Lake Naval Weapons Station. We have United States Cavalry with their depleted uranium uh, missiles and rockets and shells and they shoot at their equipment and then they uh, turn into a gaseous, gaseous form when they explode. Uh, that's depleted uranium. We have uh, low-level nuclear waste at Beatty. We have high-level nuclear waste being proposed for Yucca Mountain. We have the Nevada test site with, uh, with a thousand uh, nuclear weapons detonations. We have uh, supersonic operations areas uh, uh, um, run by the Defense Department, uh, Tonopah Test Range, which developed the stealth fighter, Area 51, which developed the B-2, uh, as well uh, the B-2 bomber, stealth bomber, as well as the uh, um, the Black Crow and this uh, 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 U-2 spy plane, which were used for many years. Uh, we also have uh, uh, other hazardous sites. So we can demonstrate that we have uh, consistently been targeted by the United States, our lands, for these hazardous and toxic uh, uh, activities, uh, putting our people in our territory at risk. We have a land, we have a people, we have uh, a language, and these are the things which are being lost because these activities are allowed to continue and hurt our communities. Beyond that, so that's the case for environmental racism. Oh, hi. Your name is Tree. Yeah, my name is Tree. And what are you doing here? I'm here, I came, well, I'm from Michigan, but I came here from Santa Fe with, and, uh, to uh, to come and protest the nuclear test site and support the Western Shoshone people and the land that is rightfully theirs, and um, and come together as a community 
in uh, to strengthen as a community spiritually and work on healing the wounds of the earth and each other. Yeah. Do the music. Yeah. Yeah. Play some music for us. Sure. Thank you. Sure. I'd love to hear it. Thanks. To the camera.
did, Mala, would you would you be able to discuss why you're here? Okay, I'm here at Healing Global Wounds. My name is Mala Spotted Eagle. I am a Western Shoshone, and the reason I'm here is because of what is going on with the Mother Earth here. This is our tribal land here, and we had signed a treaty in 1863 stating that this land was still held with the traditional Western Shoshone people and that the government had asked permission at this one uh, at this site over here in the called Nevada test site if they could utilize it to for their military but they never told us that they were going to be testing these things called atomic bombs so we've been trying to get him to stop for a long time because we realize that when these atomic bombs go off in the Mother Earth, that they are hurting the Mother Earth and that they are destroying a lot of life within the Mother Earth. This radiation knows no boundaries, no color of skins, and we know that it's traveling underneath the Mother Earth and it's traveling through the water and it's traveling in many different forms and ways. They are finding traces of radiation many miles away from here in different areas of water. And we recognize also that all that testing they did above ground, that a lot of those clouds of radiation traveled much further than what the government has put out. That's why that there's much sickness on this land, much cancers, much deformities amongst animals and children. So one of the things we recognize is that as Native people, we have recognized that everything in this life has a responsibility, is born with the responsibility as much as a gift. And us two-legged, as we call ourselves, the human beings, we are born with the responsibility as caretakers of this Mother Earth. So we have a responsibility to come here, all people do, and tell this government that they need to stop doing this because it is hurting the Mother Earth and all life upon the Mother Earth. They have found that there is no way, safe way, to dispose of what they are creating. So to us, it doesn't even make sense. Why, do, why would you create something if you have no safe way to deal with it? And we're telling them that they need to find other ways of energy until they can. And also, too, that we are trying to bring people here from all over because we realize it's not just affecting indigenous people and not indigenous people by themselves can stop this. We have to come together, all people, and be able to stand together with one heart, one voice, using you know traditional values or tribal values. Because until we change the values that we have, Nothing's going to change. We'll just change it, make it differently how we're hurting the Mother Earth. We realize that people really don't understand those tribal values, but we were all tribal people at one time upon this Mother Earth, wherever we were. Some of us and our races chose to step back further from it than others. But we, as traditional people of this land, are some of us who are still trying to maintain as much as we can of our traditional values and ways. And we recognize that those ways were common amongst all people because we had the same teacher. That teacher was the Mother Earth. And so we're trying to say, why don't we all come here using those ways so that we can help the Mother Earth again and try to find a way to do this in a nonviolent way, to try to find a peaceful, spiritual manner to help get these things stopped, to help heal the Mother Earth. So we come here. And one of the most important things we do is we get up in the morning, we pray to the Mother Earth, and we pray to all life upon the Mother Earth and start the day out that way. And we do a lot of non-violent people. Our own people have a lot to overcome because there's been a lot of hurt done to them and it's still being done to them. But also there is a lot for the non-native to overcome too because we are very stereotyped and they really don't know the real history of this land and the people and really what was done to them and they really don't know who we were as a people. And we're trying to build that bridge because we realize once we learn to respect each other, once we learn to understand each other, then we can work together from our hearts. And that's the most important thing to us. So we're here trying to share what we can of our ways with the people that come from all over the world to this spot, build that bridge so that we can walk down to the Nevada death site at one point and hopefully one day that they will realize what they are doing to the Mother Earth and we will show them by us standing together, no matter what color of our skin is, no matter where we come from, they will see people with one heart, one mind, one spirit. And for some of those people out there, we're hoping it will wake them up one day and that maybe one day they will stand with us. So that's what I'm doing here at this time. Thank you. And you're also doing some specific work in, in the area. Yes. Um, also, one of the most important things we believe is communication and that we have to find a way to learn how to communicate in a good way. And there are a couple other projects that I'm working on very extensively that, in, in this way. 
One of them is called Belonging to Mother Earth Communications. This is a project started by myself, a native, uh, another man who is part native and part white, and another woman who is all white. And we felt, well, that was a unique uh, threesome to bring together for this. The woman is a telecommunications expert and very uh, business oriented. She's been doing it for a lot of years and, and is very knowledgeable in that area. She has walked away from high positions where she was making over 75000 a year because she felt that the people in the telecommunications industry, that they were not very honorable and they didn't have very good values in what they were doing and has been looking for something to use her skills in a way to help all people. Um, the other man, who is part of both worlds, has been trying to help in both worlds to build a bridge. And myself, that we all met at a conference called Belonging to Mother Earth Conference back in Virginia Beach. And I ended up having to be the one that was the person between the indigenous, non-indigenous people to help create understanding and to help smooth over problems that we were having so and resolve them in good ways. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Catherine Blossom. I'm an elder of the Shoshone Nation. Anyhow, I've come out here to this particular time and place uh, to help in the um, in the ongoing battle of the nuclear waste because we know as Native people that the nuclear waste is doing more harm. And I do not understand as an elder why that why the nuclear waste is being brought to Shoshone land. It seemed like ever since the Europeans came 500 years ago, they've always been after and taking of the Native American people all over our nation. And when we see now what is happening with this nuclear waste, the destruction, and we know that in time, and it's already happening, our water is. In many areas in the whole world, you cannot drink it. Because our native people have been across the ocean and have seen the destruction. And yet, why is this radioactive waste being set back into our Mother Earth? Our Mother Earth is, was given to to take care of her. And how can we take care of her when others are coming in and destroying them? And they say, well, these uh, cylinders or these tanks or whatever they're using will last for thousands and hundreds and thousands of years. I don't believe that because they've lied to our Native American people for so long. And how do they know that? How do they know? because they have not lived that long themselves. And so my question to them, how can you say this? How can you tell us this? You don't know your own hearts, what you're doing. And at one time, this Turtle Island, North America, was given to our native people to take care of. We were the caretakers. That was what we were to do. And when the Europeans came, this country was beautiful. We have plenty of food. We have plenty of water. The air was pure. And our hunts were good because we took care of it. We took our job seriously. Every day we prayed. We'd get up and pray. And we'd greet the sun at an on and dawning of a new day. And we would thank the sun for coming again to bless to give us energy, give Mother Earth energy, give us energy. And the heart of Father Sky, the, the sun, that's where we get our energy. That's where we get our love. And to see this being destroyed and this atmosphere no longer here. So many people are sick. And they say, we can't even call. We don't even know what it is. We've heard the doctor say, I really can't give you a name. But it's your respiratory, the Native people can say, 
I know what's wrong. You're polluting the air, but you will not recognize it. Nor will you stop long enough to clean up your mess. And so the Native American people are still working hard. We're praying, we're doing our prayers. But you know, it's no longer just our responsibility. It's everyone's responsibility to, to get up, greet a new day with prayers, and ask that the air, the pollutant, will be cleaned up. And for the waste, not to be continued to be brought to our Turtle Island, but if they make it overseas, keep it overseas. We don't want it. Because we, the Native American people, can see the destruction. Take a look at your babies that are being born world over. They're not healthy. How many have lost their babies at birth and have aborted babies because they could not even survive the few months in their mother's womb? Because the mother's not healthy, because she has respiratory illnesses. Okay, where's my hand train of thought? Just a moment. Where is my hand train of thought? Oh, it's all over. Okay. So continuing with that train of thought where everyone needs to start picking up their prayers, saying their prayers, not in someone else's way or the way somebody else does it, but let your prayers be said from your heart to ask for Mother Earth to be healed because she's hurting. Because we're putting things in her that should never ever be put into her. Because she gives us our life. We came from her. Because we're made up of 80% of water. Where did that water come from? It came from the west of the rain. And the rest of us. We all came from Mother Earth. You and I, we're no different from one another. And with that respect in mind, with that thought, we need to realize that if our mother becomes sick, can no longer feed us, can no longer clothe us, where are we going to be? Our water is being polluted. People make recreations out of the water, the ponds, the lakes, and they're making man-made lakes. But you look at those today, and you see the garbage that people left because they do not respect themselves to pick up after themselves. They leave it. The animals don't want your garbage in their, in their yard. That's their home. I ask you this, do the animals go to your house and leave a mess for you to pick up and for you to live in. And like the native people, the animals are being pushed aside with no thought because wanton killing, we're imbalanced. Our mother earth is imbalanced because of greed. And when she no longer gives to us where are we going to be? We cannot survive. She's the one that nurtures us. She stop and realize and think clearly of what's happening. Look around you. And it's time for everybody to be responsible, take responsibility for our own actions. These are not just words. This is life. What are we leaving for our children and our children's children. Because our baby's being born ill, now the sickness is running rampant because of the earth. Our mother is, earth is sick. Our air is full of pollutant, which is making us sick because we're breathing sick air. Our water is being contaminated because man is just taking and not giving back to mother earth. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not how this Turtle Island was set up to be. This Turtle Island was given 
for us to take care of, but we we don't do that. And now people are looking to the Native American for answers. We tell them, but they don't listen. We tell them how important it is for them to take care of themselves and their family. The world is so imbalanced, people are imbalanced. At one time, it was the men who was supposed to take care of the family, but the men walked away from that responsibility. We have children that's coming into the world that don't, that no man claims them. These children growing up fatherless, but they have a father because he planted that seed. And so it's left to mothers. And mothers are not strong like they used to be. So babies are being given away. Babies are being sold. That's not right. That's against nature. That's against what we, our belief system. That never should be. So we need to look at ourselves and think of where we're going. What are we doing? What am I doing? What are you doing to help heal our mother and all that's around us?
Kokubun, coming from Japan, and I live in New York City now. Thank you. And uh, I'm Julia, and I'm Toshi. Toshi? And what's your Ruta. name? Ruta. Mm -hmm. Ruta. Okay. And hi there. And Kiri. Hi. And we're from Japan also. Uh, we live in Tokyo. Thank you. And why did you come? Why did you come to the Global Healing? Um, you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, friends told us about this, and uh, and another time uh, we stopped into Corbin's uh, Puhaba, and he told us about this gathering, and and um, we went to California, but we we got a drive to come here again, and and even um, I had to call her in New York saying that because I, I somehow had this inspiration that she needed we needed to be here together. Oh. And, and uh, I only gave her five days notice and she was able to convince her boss and come here. Everything. Very, very quickly. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, I don't know, it was an intuition to come here, but something that's very important to our future right. and what we want to do in Japan, which is um, healing work, which includes lifestyle. And, and, um, and since we're a family unit, um, when we go back to Japan, we'd like to introduce to the Japanese families um, all sorts of activities which includes this kind of awareness. And um, not preach, but through um, creativity and having fun that we can uh, be more conscious of this mother we're living on and that's taking care of us. Yes. Uh, can we add the children? Yeah. 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 その毎日祈りで始まって祈りで終わってっていう生活っていうのは本当に意義深いなというふうに思って。And we were really touched deeply with Corbin's uh, morning circle, the prayer. <laughs> to start a day with prayer and end a day with prayer and that being a natural part of life has been really um, uh, that really touched us. And we'd like to do that when we go back. I'm so glad. There's a lot of international people here. It feels really good. Yes. Really, really. Mm. Mm. So 
そうあ,あとその子供を持った家庭家族っていうものに対してのこう視野っていうものがすごくはっきりしていて本当にこう家族という一つのこう社会の一番小さな形みたいなものをすごく受け入れてくれる運,運動家がいっぱいいるんだなここにはっていうことを。すごく僕は驚いていてすごく喜びに感じていているという。Yeah, really These children are so important. They truly are, and that's that's our that's our future. That's why we're doing this. And we're so glad to have them here. So glad to have them. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. They're our treasures. They truly are. Look at that. Look at that. It was wonderful. They were able to sit in the non-violence training, and they were really great. Yeah. They'll bring it back. Sure, they will. Yeah. すごく日本に帰ったらこの経験っていうのをすごく多くの日本の友達にこう伝えていこうというふうに思ってます。When we go back to Japan, we'd like to pass on our experience here and、um, share and also、um, yeah, teach them what we have learned.、Oh, that's good. We have so much to learn from, from Japan as well. So much. It's really true. Well, sometimes, sometimes、um, elder people who live in Japan. Um, it is very difficult to talk about、uh, this kind of issue without、um, negative feelings or sadness because it's their real experience. And I can understand, but sometimes their feeling is too strong and too heavy, and they can't open their mind to the future. So I think it's time to start something new, and、uh, we can. Exchange the knowledge and experience, and、uh, we can support each other to find a more shining future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.、Oh, I'm so glad that you're doing that. I really, truly、really、am. And、okay. also,、um, on the same note, in Japan,、um, as far as I know, there are all sorts of、um, people,、um, activists against nuclear power plants and nuclear energy, but they're all separated. And, and people are trying to find a way to network, but somehow it's not really working out.、Right. But looking at this, I mean, the whole atmosphere is so much love and so much positive communication. And, and the, structure is the, one, the structure is such that people can communicate in friendship, and it's wonderful. So I, somehow I'd like to take that back to Japan so that people can network in a nice way. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Mother Earth. Yeah. <laughs> It's time for all of that.、Yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to tell the people? <laughs> community access. This is community access television. Community、oh, access、yeah. television. I didn't get that. What? No, it's all right. He's, He's like picking、this. on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving her directly because she's talking like this. So people. No, no. Ah, so. 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 クリスタルでできたスイングボールを使ってそういう人のこうヒーリングをしていこうというふうに思っていてそれをその僕らに教えてくれた女性で阿波星という女性がいて今イタリアに住んでいる人ですごくその自分をこう癒すためにすごく効果的なものなんでぜひ皆さんにもし、えー、その機会があればねあの出会っていただきたいというふうに思ってるんですけど。When we go back to Japan,、uh, we're thinking of doing healing works with、um, these instruments called the heal,、um, crystal singing bowls.、Mm -hmm. And、um, it, <laughs> they're、um, bowls made of crist crystals and、um, they're sounded. And、um, they're very wonderful, powerful tools in、um, healing and、uh, relieving tension and, and pain. So, if somehow people watching this can、um, find a chance to、um, come in contact with the crystal bowls,、um, it'd be very useful probably. It、um, helps people in focusing and, and relieving pain. So,、um, uh, yeah, crystal bowls. Crystal bowls. Email or a phone call, or if you want to send it to me, I'll send it to you. And、uh, yes, a wonderful friend of ours, her name is Awahoshi. She introduced us to these、um, crystal bowls, and somehow, if it can. Um, be made of use, it would be wonderful. That's great. Yeah, you, you and、uh, 
uh, an email address maybe fear because sometimes it's difficult uh, to uh, communicate and to try to find alternative way uh, with fear because we can't go to second stop. Um, so, uh, yeah, today some person asked me why you are here today because because you're Japanese and uh, you are trying to, what to say, um, uh, stop very strongly, this kind of thing. And I hope so, I think so, but uh, um, I don't want to keep very negative uh, memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to open my mind to what you are doing and what you are feeling and how we can share the time. So this is my thinking that I get today. Yeah. That's good. And there'll be